Hi all, a lot of you have been dealing with infertility and have been advised IVF which means in vitro fertilization or test tube baby process for the treatment of infertility and are contemplating as to when and how you can take this process. So today in this video I am going to talk about the basic steps that are involved in the process of IVF in vitro fertilization. This video will help you to understand the steps and also help you to understand the timeline of events that happen in an IVF cycle so that you can plan your cycle according to your own convenience. So starting with the first thing, it is important that we understand what exactly goes in the body of a female in a natural cycle. So if we talk of the day one of the cycle, which is the first day of the flow or the periods, that is the day when if we do an ultrasound, these are the two ovaries. We will find small little tiny follicles that are called the antral follicles or the antral follicle cum. It is only from these small little follicles that as the cycle progresses in the middle of the cycle, say around day 14 or 16, one of the follicles will start to develop and mature to a size of around 18 to 20 mm. And this maturing follicle is the one that actually would contain the tiny thing that is the egg or the female gamete. Now, the rest of these antral follicles say like there were six here and there were seven here. So of this one has grown, the remaining 12 will undergo the process of atresia, which is they will die out or they'll get wasted. Now, in an IVF cycle, the aim is actually to rescue the dying ones, to give the hormone that is released inside the body only for one egg growth in an amount that it can sustain, maintain and cause the growth of all of these follicles altogether. So, we begin the IVF cycle mostly on the second third day of the cycle of a female. But these days, because of random start protocols, we can start the IVF cycle at any day of the period length. So if we take an assumption, the female comes to us on the day one of the cycle, we do the ultrasound to see that there are no remnant cysts of the previous cycles. We also make note of the antral follicle count. Then we get the blood test done. Now these blood tests are basic hormonal tests, FSH, LH, estrogen, progesterone. Not all of them are necessary, but the required tests that are done will help us to decide the type of injection and the amount of injection that should be given to cause the growth of the follicles. Well, these hormones will change on a daily basis in the cycle. So it is important that it is done on the start of the cycle for relevance point of view. And this will also serve as a baseline and hence when the follicles grow, we will keep repeating the test so as to compare from the baseline how much is the growth because that gives us the idea of the quality of the eggs that we are going to get in this cycle. In this first step of IVF, we are targeting multi-follicular response, multi-egg growth. We are trying to make as many eggs as possible as are there in the antral follicle cup. So the ultrasound showed us, let's suppose, similar to that, six antral follicles and seven here. All our blood tests are absolutely fine. We start the injections from the day two or day three. These injections are given for four or five days and then an ultrasound is repeated and we would see that all those tiny little follicles that were there at the start of the cycle would have now grown in size. It is this growth that tells us that our injections are acting and the follicles are growing. Also, we may get estrogen levels done, estradiol hormones levels done to see the hormone that is released from these follicles and that will help us to find out whether these follicles are healthy and would contain a mature egg later or not. These injections are primarily given to cause the growth of the follicles. We know in a natural cycle, once the follicle reaches this stage, it will rupture and release the egg. Now, we don't want the egg to be released inside the body. The most common protocol that is used in IVF is to stop this process of ovulation. 
so a different kind of injection is added in the later half of the cycle while continuing the injections that are causing the growth of the follicles now overall injections are given for around 10 12 days in an ivf cycle and one mostly injection is given in the start sometimes two but this particular injection which is the antagonist is added in the later half of the cycle this is the step one and we are aiming to make all the follicles of this size somewhere around 16 to 18 mm before we give the final injection that is called the trigger injection the trigger in an IVF cycle is different because it is not going to cause the ovulation. It is just going to cause the maturity of the eggs that are inside these follicles. Then comes the second step which is the egg retrieval procedure. Now egg retrieval is the step which is performed under anesthesia. So during this step, a woman comes to the clinic after around 34 hours of the last injection which was the trigger injection and under anesthesia all the follicles that we saw on the ultrasound would contain the follicle fluid and that is aspirated along with the egg that is probably contained in them by means of transvaginal ultrasound guided needle so this egg retrieval needle is mounted on the ultrasound probe and it is inserted through the vagina no stitches no cut is given and the needle advanced the needle is advanced into the follicles the fluid is taken out it is collected into the tube and it is likely to contain the egg this tube is handed over to the embryologist who will scan the fluid for the eggs this is the day when you will get to know whether all the follicles contain the egg or not what is the quality of the egg and how is the maturity of the egg so let's presume we started with 13 follicles and all 13 of them grew well when we aspirated them. Say suppose one was empty and we had around 12 eggs on the day of egg retrieval. Now these eggs all may not be mature. Some may be in the mature state, some may be in the immature state. This is scanned by the embryologist and it is this day when your partner is asked for a semen sample. Now this semen sample is washed and is prepared for the step of fusion which brings us to the third step in IVF that is embryo formation now what is embryo embryo is the fusion product of the male and the female gamete so this fusion process can happen by two ways one is conventional IVF wherein one egg is surrounded by washed 50,000 round sperms and the best one comes and fuse it in the culture dish in the IVF lab. The second is ICSI wherein the egg is injected with the sperm under the microscope by the embryologist. So these are the two ways where how the embryo can form in an IVF cycle. Once the embryo is formed it is placed in a device called an incubator which has similar condition just like our body to nurture and cause the growth of the embryo. An incubator allows the growth of the embryo up to the blastocyst stage. Now usually when we see we have fused the egg and the sperm, we kept that in the incubator, that is the day zero of the cycle. We had around 12 eggs as we discussed for an example and of the 12 eggs, 10 were mature. These 10 were injected by the process of ICSI and then kept under the incubator. Now day zero, we have fused one egg, one sperm. On day one, we would observe that the egg and the sperm would have fused and caused the formation of the embryo. Now all the mature eggs that are injected may not result into embryo formation due to various reasons. Let's presume of the 10 mature eggs we had, we have now 10 fertilized embryos. We will see for the growth. We put back into the incubator, day two, each embryo would divide and become at a four cell stage at day two. At day three, eight cell stage. Day four is compaction state where all the cells are fused and day five is the blastocyst stage where it rearranges into outer cell layer, inner cell layer and some fluid. This is the stage where the embryo would implant in the uterine lining for the pregnancy to happen. These stages can be achieved in the incubator 
and sometimes the embryos could be slow growing and instead of forming a blastocyst at day 5 they may form the blastocyst at day 6 or day 7 also they are slow growing embryos now talking of the ivf funnel not every egg is going to reach the blastocyst stage say suppose as we said we got 10 fertilized eggs here on the day 2 we had around 8 A grade and 2 B grade. As we advance to the blastocyst stage, there is a decline and we may have around 5 A grade or 2 B grade embryos at the blastocyst stage. Pregnancy can happen with both A grade and B grade. So it is important that either these embryos should be transferred or frozen at this stage for it to be utilized in a subsequent cycle. Even if you're doing a fresh transfer, we would like to transfer two A grade embryos in um, advanced age women and single embryo in young age women and freeze the leftover for subsequent cycles and subsequent pregnancies. Following this is the last step in IVF process which is called embryo transfer. Now embryo transfer can be performed in a fresh cycle which is going to be depending upon the day of the growth of the embryo or in a frozen cycle. So in a frozen cycle, if you're applying an embryo transfer, after this process of egg retrieval, you would see your periods. And once you see your periods, we start making the lining because now we are just interested in the uterine lining. So the uterine lining would either form naturally or it can be formed by means of uh, hormonal tablets. So once the lining is of desired width, embryo transfer procedure is performed. Embryo transfer procedure is mostly performed without anesthesia. For people who are uncomfortable with vaginal checkups and ultrasounds, for them, yes, under anesthesia, embryo transfer can be performed. This is mostly done with abdominal ultrasound guidance. And we see the uterus with the ultrasound. And by means of a catheter, we put in the embryos around one centimeter away from the fundus and allow it to stay there, give medications for it to implant and see for the pregnancy test after 12 days around for our IVF outcomes. So that's the last step and probably the most important step in an IVF cycle. Now, if you are planning to visit our center from abroad, it is important for you to understand the timeline and frames for this. Let's talk of you reaching the center on day one it takes around two weeks for the egg retrieval process to happen mostly we do frozen embryo transfer but in case the egg reserve is less and we have less number of embryos in the same cycle we can attempt for a fresh embryo transfer if that is being performed it shall be done around five days from the egg retrieval and following which 12 days of medications are given before we can actually take the pregnancy test that makes it a total of somewhere around 32 days so you would need around a month stay before you can actually see for the outcome in an IVF cycle if a frozen embryo transfer is to be performed day one or day two we start the injections around two weeks for the egg retrieval procedure around another 10 days you will see your periods and once you see your periods there again from the start of the bleeding, day 2, day 3, we will see for the growth of the lining. Mostly the lining grow by the day 14 as your follicle matures. And after day 14, by day 19, we will do the embryo transfer. And 12 days from here, we will do the pregnancy test. So that again makes it around 31 days. So if you are planning and you are likely to undergo a frozen embryo transfer, probably you should plan for 2 months stay in Delhi to get your IVF cycle done. I hope this video is uh, useful for you to plan your IVF cycle and for you to understand how exactly IVF works. If you have any more doubts, you can put up in the comment section. You want a detailed consultation based on your reports, you can contact us on our WhatsApp number. Uh, my coordinator will book an online consultation for you. We'll be happy to help you.